Listening test instructions. The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Hey, you look concerned. What's on your mind? The final exam. I'm not fully prepared yet. Well, don't worry too much. You still have three days. Yeah, but three days will fly past in a wink. Well, you still have time to cram things in your brain anyway. Question 1. Why is the man looked worried? You will hear a conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Good evening. Thank you for coming in today. I'm Mrs. Johnson, and I teach English to your daughter, Emily. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us. How is Emily doing in your class? Emily is a bright student with a lot of potential. She participates actively in discussions, and her writing shows creativity. However, I've noticed she's been struggling a bit with turning in assignments on time. For instance, her last essay was two days late, which affected her grade. I see. Is there a specific reason for the delay in submitting assignments? It seems to be a mix of time management and some difficulty organizing her thoughts. In class, she contributes well, but I believe she could benefit from more structured study habits at home. Her understanding of the material is solid. She just needs to work on consistency. That's good to know. We'll definitely work on creating a better routine for her at home. How can we support her further? Encouraging her to keep a planner and breaking down larger assignments into smaller tasks might help. She responds well to encouragement and guidance so your involvement will certainly make a difference. Thank you for the insights, Mrs. Johnson. We'll start implementing these strategies at home right away. What issue has Emily been facing in Mrs. Johnson's class? How did Emily's late submission of an essay affect her? According to Mrs. Johnson, what is Emily's area for improvement? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. You're welcome. I'm confident these adjustments will benefit Emily's progress. Moving on, in terms of her comprehension and critical thinking skills, Emily excels. She engages well with complex texts and offers insightful interpretations during our discussions. That's wonderful to hear. She has always enjoyed reading and analyzing stories. 
Are there any areas you think she could focus on to further improve? One area I've noticed she could develop further is in structuring her arguments in essays. While her ideas are strong, sometimes the flow of her writing could be more coherent. Encouraging her to outline her thoughts before writing could help in this regard. I'll be sure to talk to her about that. Is there anything else you recommend we do to support her academic growth? Regular reading at home and discussing different viewpoints on current events or topics of interest could broaden her perspective. Also, if she has any questions or needs clarification on assignments, encouraging her to ask during or after class would be beneficial. Absolutely. We'll make sure to incorporate these into our routine. Thank you for your guidance, Mrs. Johnson. What is one area where Emily could improve according to her teacher? In accordance with the discourse, what is Emily's area of expertise? What is recommended for Emily's academic growth? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. You're welcome. Before we finish, I want to mention that Emily is a valued member of our classroom community. Her peers enjoy working with her, and she contributes positively to our class environment. That's great to hear. Emily has always been social and enjoys being part of a team. Indeed, her teamwork skills are excellent. She collaborates well with others during group activities and projects, which is a valuable skill both academically and socially. I'm glad to hear she's thriving in that aspect, too. Thank you for all your feedback, Mrs. Johnson. We appreciate your dedication to Emily's education. It's my pleasure. I'm here to support Emily in any way I can. Please feel free to reach out if you have any further questions or concerns as the semester progresses. We will, thank you. Have a good evening, Mrs. Johnson. You too. Goodbye for now. According to the conversation, what aspect of Emily does the parent find pleasing? What does the teacher highlight as Emily's strong suit during group activities? You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi, I'd like to open a new bank account, please. Sure, I'd be happy to help you with that. Do you have a specific type of account in mind, like checking or savings? I'm looking to open a checking account primarily, but I might consider a savings account too. Great. 
For a checking account, we have a few options depending on your needs. Do you prefer something with no monthly fees or one one that earns interest? No fees would be ideal. I'm not sure how much I'd keep in the account initially, so something without fees would be more flexible. Understood. We have a basic checking account option that fits that description. It comes with a debit card and online banking access. Would you like to add a savings account as well? Yes, I think having a savings account would be ideal for longer-term savings. Perfect. Our savings accounts offer competitive interest rates. Would you like them linked to make transfers between accounts easier? Yes, that sounds convenient. All right. Could I see your ID and proof of address, please? We need to verify your identity to proceed with the account opening. Sure. Here's my driver's license and a recent utility bill. Thank you. While I while I process these, can I ask if you'd like to sign up for any additional services? We offer overdraft protection and mobile deposit features, for example. Mobile deposit would be useful. What exactly does overdraft protection entail? Overdraft protection prevents your account from being overdrawn by transferring funds from your savings account or linking to a line of credit in case you have insufficient funds. That sounds like a good safety net. Let's add that. Certainly. And would you like to order checks for your checking account? Yes, please. Just a basic set to start with. Got it. I'll include that in the setup. Now, I'll just need your signature here and here to finalize everything. Sure, no problem. Excellent. Your accounts are all set up. Here are your debit card and temporary checks. Your personalized checks will arrive in the mail within a week. Thank you so much for your help, Sarah. This was much easier than I expected. You're welcome, John. If you have any questions or need assistance with online banking, feel free to reach out to us anytime. We'll do. Thanks again. Have a great day. Which type of account is John primarily interested in? What additional account does John consider opening? What feature does John prefer for his checking account? What does Sarah mention about the checking account option? What additional service does Sarah ask John about? You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey, Jamie. How's it going? Hey, Alex. I'm good. Just trying to adjust to this remote work setup. It's been quite a challenge. Yeah, I hear you. What specifically are you finding difficult? Well, for starters, it's really hard to separate work from home life. My desk is right next to my bed, so it feels like I'm always at work. I totally get that. When I started working remotely, I had the same issue. 
Have you tried setting up a dedicated workspace? I have, but my apartment is so small that there aren't many options. I did get a room divider, which helps a bit, but still, it's tough to mentally switch off. That makes sense. Another thing that helped me was sticking to a routine, like, like having a set time to start and end work. It creates a bit of structure. That's a good idea. I've been a bit lax with my schedule, which probably isn't helping. What about staying connected with your team? I feel like I'm missing out on those casual conversations that happen in the office. That's definitely one of the downsides. We've tried to replicate that with virtual coffee breaks and team check-ins, but it's not quite the same. It does help a bit, though. Virtual coffee breaks. How does that work? Basically, we schedule a 15-minute video call a few times a week where we just chat about non-work stuff. It's informal and helps keep that social connection. I like that idea. I'll suggest it to my team. Another thing I'm struggling with is communication. Sometimes it's hard to convey tone through messages, and I worry about things getting lost in translation. Communication is definitely trickier. We've been using more video calls for discussions that need clarity and making sure to over-communicate to avoid misunderstandings. Emojis can surprisingly help with own too. Haha, <laughs> I've been using more emojis too. It does help lighten things up. What about staying productive? I find it hard to focus with all the distractions at home. Yeah, distractions are a big issue. I've found that using time management techniques, like the Pomodoro method, helps me stay on track. Also, noise-canceling headphones are a lifesaver. I've heard about the Pomodoro method, but haven't tried it. I'll give it a shot. And yeah, maybe I should invest in some good headphones. Definitely worth it. Remote work has its challenges, but with some adjustments, it can be really rewarding. Just takes a bit of time to find what works best for you. Thanks for the tips, X. I'll try implementing some of these changes and see how it goes. No problem, Jamie. Good luck. Let me know if you need any more advice. How does Alex suggest Jamie improve their workspace? What does Alex recommend to help maintain a work-life balance? What is one way Alex suggests staying connected with colleagues while working remotely? According to Alex, what is a challenge with remote communication? What technique does Alex use to manage distractions during remote work? How does Jamie plan to improve communication while working remotely?
you will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. Scientists at the University of Cambridge have announced a groundbreaking discovery in the field of renewable energy. Researchers have developed a novel method to produce hydrogen fuel from sunlight and water using a highly efficient, low-cost catalyst. This innovation could revolutionize the energy sector, prov providing a sustainable and clean alternative to fossil fuels. The research team, led by Dr. Emily Carter, has been working on this project for over five years. Their breakthrough involves a new type of photocatalyst made from abundant and inexpensive materials, including iron and nickel. Unlike null methods that rely on rare and expensive metals like platinum, this new catalyst can be produced at a fraction of the cost, making hydrogen production more economically viable. Hydrogen fuel, often touted as the fuel of the future, can be used in a variety of applications, from powering vehicles to generating electricity. It produces only water as a byproduct, making it an environmentally friendly option. However, one of the main challenges has been finding an efficient and cost-effective way to produce hydrogen. The new catalyst developed by Dr. Carter's team addresses this challenge, potentially paving the way for, wi for widespread adoption of hydrogen energy. The implications of this discovery are far-reaching. It could significantly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, decrease greenhouse gas emissions, and help combat climate change. Moreover, it offers a promising solution for energy storage, which is crucial for the integration of renewable energy sources like solar and wind into the power grid. The next steps for the research team include scaling up the production process and conducting real-world tests to evaluate the catalyst's performance in various environments. If successful, this innovation could lead to a new era of sustainable energy, transforming the way we power our world. Dr. Carter and her team are optimistic about the future and are committed to continuing their work towards a cleaner, greener planet.
you will listen to a two minutes video, then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. So, I think we need to discuss the issue with the project deadlines. It's becoming a real problem. I know, right? I've been staying late every night this week just to keep up, but I don't think this is sustainable. Absolutely. I've noticed the same. The workload has been crazy. We've got the Johnson account and the new marketing campaign both needing our attention at the same time. Exactly. And it's not just us. Everyone seems stressed out. We need a solution. Have you guys spoken to Mark about it? I tried bringing it up briefly, but he seemed too busy to really listen. He just said we need to manage our time better. That's frustrating. It's not just about time management. It's about the sheer volume of work. We need more resources or some kind of adjustment to the deadlines. Maybe we should schedule a formal meeting with Mark, lay out our concerns and propose some solutions. He might take it more seriously if we're all on the same page. That's a good idea. What kind of solutions are we thinking about proposing? We can't just go in there and complain without offering any ideas. True. One thing we could suggest is hiring temporary help for the duration of these two projects. Even just one or two additional hands could make a big difference. I agree. We could also propose extending the deadlines if possible. Even just a week or two could alleviate some of the pressure. And maybe we can discuss redistributing some of the tasks. There might be things that could be delegated to other departments or outsourced. Yes, and we should emphasize the impact this stress is having on the team's morale and productivity. If we're all burnt out, the quality of work is going to suffer, which is ultimately bad for the company. Definitely. We should also collect some data to support our case. Maybe track the hours we're putting in and compare it to a typical workload. That's smart. Mark is very data-driven. If we can show him the numbers, he might be more inclined to take action. Okay, so let's plan this out. Who's going to collect the data, and when should we try to schedule this meeting? I can start tracking the hours we're all working and compile the data. As for the meeting, how about we aim for early next week? That gives us a few days to prepare. Works for me. I'll draft an email to Mark requesting the meeting and outlining the main points we want to discuss. That way, he knows it's serious and can prepare too. Great. I'll work on a list of tasks that could potentially be outsourced or redistributed. This way, we have concrete examples to bring to the table. Perfect. This sounds like a solid plan. Hopefully. Mark will be receptive to our concerns, and we can find a way to make this more manageable. Yeah, we've got to stay optimistic. We're all in this together, and we'll find a way to make it work. Absolutely. Let's finish up our coffee and get back to it. We've got a lot to do, but at least we're moving forward with a plan. Agreed. Here's to a more balanced workload and a productive meeting next week.
you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. The impact of social media influencers on consumer behavior is profound and multifaceted. Influencers, who often possess large followings on platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, have become pivotal in shaping purchasing decisions. Their ability to build trust and authenticity with their audience allow them to wield significant influence over consumer choices. Firstly, influencers create relatable and engaging content that resonates with their followers. By sharing personal stories, product reviews, and lifestyle tips, they foster a sense of community and trust. This personal connection makes followers more likely to consider and purchase products recommended by the influencer. According to studies, nearly 70% of teens trust influencers more than traditional celebrities, highlighting the shift in where consumers derive their purchasing cues. Moreover, influencers often provide authentic testimonies and real-life applications of products, which traditional advertisements may lack. This authenticity is crucial as modern consumers increasingly value transparency and relatability. When an influencer shares a positive experience with a product, it can lead to a direct increase in sales and brand loyalty. The impact of influencers also extends to brand awareness. Collaborations between brands and influencers can introduce products to new targeted audiences, often resulting in heightened brand visibility and engagement. For instance, a well-executed influencer campaign can create viral content that significantly boosts a brand's online presence. So, social media influencers play a vital role in shaping consumer behavior through trust-building, authentic content, and effective brand partnerships. Their influence underscores a paradigm shift in marketing strategies, moving away from traditional advertising towards more personal and direct consumer engagement.